Hi everyone, it's good to see you, good to um, um, be able to share with you some good news, I hope, for the day. Um, as you know, just to start out, um, COVID is um, rampant all over the country. And uh, last Sunday, we've been having two services, one Saturday night and one Sunday morning. And last Sunday we had, you know, quite a few people in church at the um, uh, 9.30 service. And that just isn't going to work at a time like this. So um, we're going to be canceling the Saturday night service. And we're going to be doing two services on Sunday morning. Um, we'll do a service at 8.30 and one at 10. I'm not sure yet which one will be uh, live or live streamed. Maybe both will. I don't know yet, but we'll let you know that. I'll, if, you, if you're watching these videos, I'll let you know as everything gets worked out for us um, with that. So um, this Sunday, no service Saturday night. Services at 8.30 and 10 o'clock. We're hoping to you know, keep the numbers down at each service. Real important for you to wear your masks and to wear them up over your nose, not underneath your nose, um, and to stay six feet apart when you're sitting. Um, if somebody comes and sits too close to you, I, I would suggest you get up rather than tell them to go move. Might be a new person or something, doesn't know everything. Uh, just get up and move. By the way, there's almost always lots of seats in the front. Just wanted to say that. Okay, so having said that, services at 8.30 and 10 o'clock this Sunday. Um, we are in 2 Kings chapter 5, and this is a cool story that Elisha, uh, you know, there's two prophets. Uh, Elijah was the first one, E-L-I-J-A-H. This is Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, who is his protege and takes over after Elijah goes in the chariot up to heaven. Um, and in this case... You're going to read this story and go, whoa, uh, there's a story in the New Testament a lot like that. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So it's from uh, verse 42 of chapter 5 of Second Kings. One day, a man from Baal Salashah brought the man of God a sack of fresh grain and 20 loaves of, of barley bread made from the first grain of the harvest. Elisha said... Give it to the people so they can eat. What? The servant exclaimed, Feed a hundred people with only this? But Elisha repeated, Give it to the people so they can eat. For this is what the Lord says. Everyone will eat, and there will, be, there, there will even be some left over. And when they gave it to the people, there was plenty for all, and some left over, just as the Lord had promised. Well, I'm sure most of you at this point are thinking about the story in the New Testament where Jesus is uh, feeding the 5,000 on the hillside. And uh, it's more spectacular than this because he only has five loaves and two fish. And he feeds thousands, 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, and there's 12 baskets left over afterwards. So Jesus' miracle is even more amazing. But here, you know, God has um, supplying the need. I, I've probably, you've probably heard this story from me before, but we fed um, about five, no, four to 500 people in Thanksgiving. And I remember one Thanksgiving, we had people bring um, turkeys. And one Thanksgiving, a couple people bugged out on bringing turkeys. They either forgot or I don't know what it was, but we were a couple turkeys short and some food short. And so we didn't have what we needed to feed all these people. And I remember at some point the line was going out the door and I looked at what we had left and it just wasn't going to be enough. So um, I went into the sanctuary and I prayed, Lord, we need another miracle here because we don't have enough food for all these people. And, uh, and then I kind of hid for a while because I didn't want to face the consequences. I had a lot of faith. You can see that. Uh, tons of faith. And uh, I went into the sanctuary, was praying, and I came back after all the food was, or all the people had gone through the line, everybody had eaten. And I went to the kitchen. I said, "Well, we have any food left over?" And they said, "Yeah, we just had enough." And I thought that was a miracle because there's no way we were going to have enough. 
So I guess that's maybe a modern day version of uh, what Elisha and Jesus did. But it does bring a point to us, and that is we kind of live with limited ideas about what is available. But God's not limited. God is uh, not limited at all with what he can do and uh, what he can provide for us. So um, even uh, I had a funeral yesterday at the graveside, and even at um, the graveside, God is not limited um, because Jesus is the resurrection and life. And uh, these bodies that we lay to rest now are going to rise one day. Uh, just as they did in Matthew when they uh, Jesus died on the cross and all of a sudden hundreds of people come out of graves and walk into the town. That's in Matthew, end of Matthew. So there, God doesn't have the limits that we do. And a lot of times we take our limits and we place on God. Well, you know, we, we can't do that in a church because we don't have the resources to do it. Well, if God's calling you to something... God will provide the resources. He's not limited. God's not limited at all. So um, I just want you to think about that in your life today where you're, you're thinking limited in your life. But God is the God of all things and has m- many resources at his, disposable, at his disposal. So God is not limited. Only we are. And faith is what triggers the unlimited power of God, trusting that God will do what God has asked. Now, of course, first, you have to believe and know that God has asked you to do something. Now, like Elijah says here, he says uh, um, that uh, give it to the people so they can eat, for this is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. Everyone uh, will eat, and there will even be some left over. So Elijah had gotten a word from God that there would be leftovers and so he acted on faith based on that so first of all it's got to be the lord's will what you're doing but if it's the lord's will and you trust that it's the lord's will he's told you it's his will then um he's going to provide what's needed to get that done in your life in your church um and in your world so um Remember, God's not limited, only you are, but faith unlocks the key to the unlimited resources of God. God bless. Have a great day.